How you doing, everybody? Today we're going to take a look at Shazam! Fury of the Gods, directed by David F. Sandberg. Asher Angel and Zachary Levi are once again back as Billy Batson and Shazam. And as a side effect of their fight with Savannah at the end of the last movie, they have inadvertently unleashed the Daughters of Atlas upon the world. They are Hespera, Calypso, and Peggy. Wait, no. And they have claimed the Staff of the Wizard, once again played by Jimon Hansu, who is not dead, and they plan to use it to recreate the Realm of the Gods by overriding our realm. And it's up to Billy and the fam to stop him. I very much enjoyed the first Shazam movie, one of the best to come out of the DC Universe so far. As for the sequel, I also enjoyed it, but not as much. I think this was a bit of a step backward. The action sequences are a lot of fun, which really isn't surprising. I mean, you can't not have fun when someone is throwing a car at a dragon. It's just not done. And I think the cast did a pretty good job overall, with a few exceptions that I'll get to. Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu play two of the Daughters of Atlas. I'm not even sure if I should mention who plays the third, because it's kind of spoilery. And they are both just pure cartoon villains, which actually fits this franchise pretty well. Always like seeing Jimon Hansu, he is great in everything he does, and he deserves a lot more credit than he gets. And I do love the Shazam Lee, especially Darla, who is precious and must be protected at all costs. They have some very funny moments as well. They, at some point, acquired this magical pen that can transcribe letters for them, and that sequence was way funnier than it had any right to be. The screenplay maybe needed another pass. Early on, Billy, as Shazam, is in a pediatrician's office talking about his family because he apparently does not know the difference between a pediatrician and a psychiatrist, which is weird. And he's talking about how he's concerned that the family is not really working together as much as they used to. They're all kind of off doing their own thing. But the problem is we don't really see a lot of that. Pretty much every time we see the family, they're all together except for like one scene with Freddy. Speaking of Freddy, he somehow has a thing going with one of the Daughters of Atlas, the one who looks like a younger woman, although she is still about 6,000 years old, and... Ooh, that's a bit weird. There's even a moment where the foster parents are like, this seems inappropriate, right? Yes! Yes, it is! Very much so! We are getting Twilight vibes here! That's not good! And the weird thing is, the movie is playing it for laughs, and it really... no. No, guys, no, not funny. There's a similar thing with Billy having a crush on Wonder Woman, but that one is handled much better because Wonder Woman is not actually entertaining the idea. She's treating him just like a teenager with a crush on an older woman because that's exactly how she should treat it. And it should have gone the same way with Freddy. And unfortunately, Zachary Levi's performance is starting to get a little grating. And I think part of the problem is his performance does not really fit the role he's supposed to be playing. He is very good at playing a boy trapped in a grown man's body. He is not very good at playing Billy Batson trapped in a grown man's body. Zachary Levi and Asher Angel are not playing the same character, and maybe that was true in the first movie as well, and I was able to overlook it because I was entertained enough, but now that I've seen it, I can't unsee it. And for that matter, Jack Dylan Grazer and Adam Brody have the same problem. They're the child and adult versions of Freddy, and again, not really playing the same character. Based on the energy levels of those characters, their adult counterparts really should be switched. And really, since Angel is pretty much a grown-ass man himself now, he really should be playing both versions of the character. Him changing into a different adult doesn't make a whole lot of sense at this point. They do that with Grace Curry. She does not change into a different adult when she turns into her superhero form, and it really should be the same with Billy now. And part of that may be due to the filming being delayed because of the pandemic. The fact that there's a Game of Thrones reference in this movie kind of gives that away. Also, the Skittles product placement was just... weird. Made even weirder by Darla shouting, Taste the rainbow, motherfucker. Of course, they cut away just before she says it, but I have a really hard time buying Darla dropping the F-bomb. That just doesn't fit. Overall, it's a step back from its predecessor, but it's fine. And if you like the first movie, I would say it's worth a matinee. And that's all I gotta say about Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Till next time, take care.